There's two events this weekend which have sort of dominated my thoughts, if not necessarily the news. The first is the Mike Amesbury event, and the second one is the spat between Robert Jenrick and Kemi Badenoch. And I think it makes... I think the Jenrick Badenoch uh, personal attacks do as much damage to the Conservative Party as Mike... Amesbury does to the Labour Party. The optics surrounding Amesbury are nothing short of challenging for both the MP and for Labour's public image. For a figure who once held four shadow ministerial roles, Amesbury's actions caught on film in the early hours by uh, concerned citizens publicly berating a man he allegedly felt threatened by and then punching him six times are likely to raise eyebrows across the political spectrum. And you can make comparisons with Prescott, but Prescott only delivered one punch. And that was because he was egged. It was in response to an attack. In the case of Amesbury, the man he punched had turned away, had his hands in his pockets. Visually and verbally, the clip presents Amesbury as a combative thug, not in control of his temper, acutely aware of his public position as he makes clear in his repetition of you won't threaten the MP again, will you? It's aggressive, it's nasty, it's torturous stuff. His statements, rather than diffusing the tension, escalated it, particularly when a bystander quips that uh, the less than flattering title MP for gobshites. In a time when Labour aims to present itself as the professional disciplined alternative to the Conservative, to the past Conservative government, this outburst must be viewed as undermining their message of stability and control. And Labour's response has so far been fairly neutral and non-committal, acknowledging Amesbury's own provocative approach to reporting the incident, but, but avoiding any overt commentary on his conduct other than um, stripping him of the whip. This approach aligns with Labour's usual strategy of treading carefully around controversies that could spiral, yet Amesbury's conduct adds fuel to the argument of Labour detractors who question why the party is undergoing a cultural and disciplinary shift for the better, um, or, or or whether inf incidents like this signify a troubling undercurrent. And I think this isn't about Labour or about the Conservatives, this is about Parliament, and this is about the dignity of an MP's office. We've already got a situation in reform where there's um, constituency MPs who don't hold surgeries. Now we've got a situation in Labour where MPs can attack constituents. Doesn't matter what the constituents say. When the MP doesn't like it, he lashes out with his fists. Well, there are recent stories of people who have been uh, brain damaged by a single thump. For Amesbury himself, who's now relegated from his previous front bench roles, the incident highlights the potential career costs of failing to maintain public composure. It's an example his whips uh, have no doubt examined, not necessarily for the fact of the confrontation, but for the optics it's created. An MP engaging in a public brawl on a highway in his own constituency at 3am. Hardly the image of an open and accessible government that Amesbury is keen to be part of. The timing and the circumstances could leave Labour exposed to criticism from, opponent, from opponents ready to question their stability and discipline in their ranks. As for Amesbury, he now faces this uphill battle in maintaining his local support or, more pressingly, improving his value to the leadership team striving to present Labour as not only capable but composed. I think much of that is is something that has to be dumped. He has to he has to quit Parliament. Um, and 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 the issue about the legality, the the legal case, is something separate. This is about optics, and the optics are travelling around the world at great speed. Uh, that um, our elected MPs hit their constituents. That doesn't look good for the mother of parliaments. And then we look to the Conservative side with this spat between Robert Jenrick and Kemi Badenoch, which is fast becoming a hazard to the 
Tory brand in exactly the same way as Mike Amesbury's outburst is proving for Labour. Badenoch's thinly veiled swipe at Jenrick's ethical record, uh, suggesting her leadership would be scandal free, cut sharply against his past controversy over approving a development by the businessman Richard Desmond, which nearly saved Desmond £40 million in community charges before Jenrick's reversal under pressure. Jenrick, in turn, has responded with outright fury, decrying Badenoch's garbage personal attack and warning that her conduct could lead to the death of the Conservative Party. Well, only now he recognises that? Only now? The whole Conservative Party leadership election contributes to the death of the Conservative Party. The, the, the content of Jenrick's leadership bid and the manner of Badenoch's leadership approach are so detestable and so unlikely to pull back the One Nation Tories that formed the bulk of the party that this party is almost inevitably going to die. For a party aimed aiming to project unity and stability, it barrels towards as it, as it barrels towards uh, what a general election in five years' time as it tries to adjust itself to being in opposition. This very public exchange strikes at the heart of its image. Both candidates ostensibly vying to prove themselves the epitome of Tory principles, conservative values, whatever they are, are instead locked in the fray that underscores a factionalism within the party. They might just as well be throwing punches. Jenrick's suggestion that Badenoch's attacks amount to misinformation and petty insults positions her as divisive rather than unifying, a rather dangerous label for a front bench for a front bench runner in a leadership contest. Badenoch, unrepentant, maintains that her comments were merely an honest response to the growing distrust of Conservatives. Her emphasis on transparency seems aimed at distinguishing herself as a as an antidote to scandals, a sharp juxtaposition to Jenrick's chequered past, while she paints herself as the front runner who can move beyond old divisions. But remember the 11th of May, 2023, I think, and her spat with the Speaker of the House of Commons, her, her thinly disguised sulk, her petulance. Is that what you want? Um, it's uh, she. She simply isn't winning support from everyone, and she she sides she sidesteps personal um, self self knowledge. The stakes of this de debacle are highly are hardly minor. The very public feud exposes a deep seated fracture within the party and presents an image of infighting that doesn't bode well for a leadership change and for a Conservative Party that purports to hold to uphold national traditional decorum in a way that clearly under Mike Amesbury Labour is not. It's a damning revelation of the so called yellow card system, a protocol set in to rein in personal attacks. It's been flatly ignored. Far from showcasing a contest of ideas the race has devolved into a blame game over personal integrity and ambition, veering dangerously close to tabloid territory. Jenrick's GB News interview and Badenoch's pointed retorts have amplified an internal rift within the um, Conservative Party that has been brought into the national spotlight, resonating poorly with voters fatigued by internal Conservative strife. It, it's just one thing after another with the Conservatives and... Um, I, 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 I don't know, there, there must be many people who are shrugging and saying, I don't want any more of this nonsense. So many leaders and so much garbage, to use Jenrick's word. Badenoch's insistence on honesty and clarity, well, she doesn't have any. If she had some, she would come clean about her attitude to the Speaker of the House of Commons. And she would be a little bit more respectful. She's trying to appeal to a disillusioned public. And yet she's adding more, more um, bile. 
The fallout of these attacks risks casting her not as a refreshing leader, but as one who may sacrifice internal unity for the sake of forthrightness, a quality that, while commendable and, uh, and while she enjoys doing it, is volatile in the context of party politics. The long-term damage of this spat could parallel Amesbury's impact on Labour if it cements a perception of the Conservatives as prone to discord and personal vendettas rather than focusing on policy-driven leadership and getting on with delivering for the people and challenging, holding the Labour Party to account, holding the government to account. By the end of this leadership saga, the party may find itself more deeply divided, its leadership contests remembered less for inspiring candidates and more for underscoring internal bitterness and weak, weak leaders, barely capable barely old enough to know what's going on. If the ultimate victor cannot heal the rifts exposed by such public and damaging confrontation, the Conservative Party may find its image irrevocably tarnished. Many people who've already voted may already be experiencing voters' remorse, regardless of who holds the title. <laughs>